Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are gonna be kind of finishing up the month of January in my reading journal. This is new video content for my channel. I hope you enjoy it. So I'm gonna take you through so we can fill out some of the bingos and the stat page and things like that. And then I will do like mini reviews on each book that I read in case there's something that you would like to read or that you would like to put on your TBR in the upcoming months. So for the month of January, January, I read a total of 16 books. So I'll go to the spread where I keep kind of like this running going. So um, what I've already realized is that there's no way because these are now February and there's no way to distinguish, you know, month to month on here, which is OK, I think. Or I might have to also designate a color to, you know, show that I read certain ones in January and then this black block is in February. But 16 books were in the month of January. Um, I loved everything very much. The only book I so the only book I gave a three star to would be Lessons in Chemistry. So what I mean by that, what we're gonna do, so it, for instance, I have this ongoing spread. I've done all of my reviews towards the back. Then on this, I have been listing out the books I purchased, whether they were new, um, ones I got on Pango with the P or gifted or the ones I found, I put a T if they were from the thrift store. Um, and then also anything that was Kindle. So I actually have more to add to this. Read to read next is my TBR. So I have a few going on there and my five star reads are there. And then this is the ongoing list with my star rating as well. So once again, I think whatever color I go with for this, which we'll do together, I will also indicate probably in the numbers here that I read those in January, so that will can compartmentalize it. Um, reading with Heba, so that was why I read Lessons in Chemistry, the book of the month. I did enjoy both of these, so I already added those as a flip. Even for February, I picked two, so we will mark that. And then for here, my monthly favorite, it was so hard. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to just pick one every month. Because even now my choice is not one, it's really like this series. Um, because I gave five star to Taylor Jenkins Reid, Carrie, um, Carrie's solo, Carrie Soto's Comeback. Great book, loved it. I loved In the Weeds by B.K. Bronson. This is the second book in the series and I will get to the third, loved it. Loved Michelle Obama's book as much too. Loved this series. And then I also really enjoyed reading the memoir Crying in H Mart. This was also just very touching. So I almost, because they're also different genres, I almost feel like, can I have a favorite book per genre? Like if they were all romance, okay, then pick one romance that you love. But like as far as nonfiction, these were both great, you know? And if anything, like this one's very inspirational, love Michelle, but this one touched my heart, you know? <laughs> and then all of the, the series is great. And there's two more books that I will read hopefully in February. And out of all, I do, I love them equally because they're just so different as far as the characters. But I think maybe the second book was my favorite. And then Taylor Jenkins Reid is just like my one of my favorite authors. So it's hard. But I think I will just put down um, Tattered Stars just as the beginning of finding A, also a new author that I really enjoy. And because I already love Taylor Jenkins Reid. And then I think I might maybe make another spread like this, put the insert in it and do like the runner up, you know, <laughs> is what I'm thinking. So then in addition, I do have, oh, so this is what we're filling out. So I do have my sel shelfie. They're not colored in and that's okay, but I have the titles in there because I'll figure out there. So then for here, I feel like I'm just going to make January this kind of like soft peachy color. And we read a total of 16 books. So do, 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 do. And that way next month, it will clearly be another color. And that way, uh, hopefully I'll do like, not to say competing colors, but um, what's the word? Complementary colors so that these will always have a clear demarcation. Um, and then over here, this is my Goodread challenge. So I'm wondering, A, if this is redundant, but for this one, it's broken down by genre. So what I kind of feel like, you just have to pick colors. So I read no thrillers this month. We'll make fiction like a blue color and for fiction I read three that were fiction oh and you know what the thing is though too hmm because the first one was first one fiction I'll do it in the order of how I read them 
So this might take some time. So let me put you on fast forward while I do this part. So that will show the variety that I read um, for the month of January. Like I said, I'm not coloring that one. And yeah, okay. And so then for our stats. So I did them all already on the side. Um, that way I didn't waste time with you. So books read, I did 16. Pages is 5,509. I listened to four, just audio. 12, audio plus the physical. Of those 12, eight I owned and four were from the library. So those are my stats there. Then it was three fiction, two nonfiction, six romance, two YA, and zero thrillers. And then for ratings, I had seven five-star reads, eight four-star reads, and one three-star. And then nothing else. I didn't DNF anything. So that is where we're at. So let's do the book reviews. So my first book I read was, um, okay, and then let me talk briefly. All right, let me talk briefly. For the pages on my book reviews, a lot of them were using stickers, as you can see. These were mostly from Live Love Posh sticker books, as well as I believe Kell of a Plan was like this one. Um, and I actually did obviously keep up with it. And then you can see also at, around here, because I did one book per page, I kind of got nervous that I might not have enough to read like all 100 books for the year doing it that way. Um, so I started doing two per page once in a while. And then I, because I really like this one, I had a lot to say. This one was my happy planner. Okay, so let's go into it. So Taylor Jenkins read Carrie Soto is back love this book. It If you like her style of writing, this is right up there. This is definitely a strong female character named Carrie Soto who went out of retirement. She's a tennis player and she had like the ultimate title. She's been in retirement and someone up and coming in the ranks is about to break her title and she ain't having it. So she decides to come out, out of retirement and to hold her record and so it was a fantastic read. I love her relationship with her dad. Her dad is her coach. Um, her mom, I think, passed away early on. And then her like um, uh, practice buddy, tennis, also tennis player, becomes her love interest. And their bickering was fantastic. So love it. A lot of great quotes were in here too. Um, I This is one I do own because I do just co collect co uh, Taylor Jenkins read book, but a definite solid four star, maybe four and a half. Oh no, I gave it five. Yes. Five star. Loved it. Six of Crows I finally read. Um, it's YA. It's considered a YA fantasy and I loved it. So I, I also printed out some um, fan art as they call it. And it's about like six kind of like thieves, uh, gangsters, you know, people in, with, that have their own merit, like one's like truly a thief and one's, you know, a con artist and one is a spy and they all kind of get together to do this one big heist. Um, it was easy to understand and follow along in this world. There is um, a duet. It's a duet. So I know there's another book. Loved it. It was really good. Four star read for me. Not my favorite, but um, I think I just read it to see what all the hype was about. And I understand. Matthew Quick, We Are the Light. This one was a very touching read. Four star, deals with uh, trigger warnings for mass shootings. So it happened in a small town at a movie theater. And it's about this town's way, and in particular, these two specific characters and how they heal. Um, uh, trigger warnings for like, uh, not trigger warnings, but um, representative represents a, a lot of mental health issues because he's like hallucinating and sees his wife as an angel who did pass away in that massacre and he's like a sole survivor and then the other character is the shooter's younger brother and how he's become like the black sheep in town and they take on this like film project so beautiful read made me cry would recommend i got it in book of the month in the Weeds is the second book in her series. The first one was Love Light Farms. This is a second chance romance. Beckett and Evie are the main characters and it takes place on this like Christmas tree farm. 
he swoons for her. It is so good. I think second chance romance are, are, is my favorite trope. Um, read this very fast. And the next one in the book is uh, Mixed Signals, which deal... So each book is a certain set of characters in the book, so you'll see them intertwine. I do believe you can read it as a standalone, um, but it's good to read Love Light Farms first so you can see the characters, and then Beckett comes in. He's, like, my favorite, like, boyfriend uh, character. Michelle Obama, The Light We Carry. It's... It, I love Michelle Obama, so let me just preface that because it's probably a biased review. But Becoming was fantastic. It was my first glimpse into her writing style and how inspirational she can be. She is like Oprah part two. If you like Oprah, you'll love her. And this book is definitely trying to be a very self-help book to understand that you have value, you have worth, and your light can shine in someone's world and that is good. And so it's definitely that whole sort of mantra of like be comfortable being you because your light is special to someone else and you may not realize it and it may be small or it may be big, but it still has value. And for that, like I loved, I love her book. Court of Frost and Starlight. I have re re been reading the series. It's the fourth book in the series. I feel like this was more of a novella. It was um, uh, Farah and Ray Sands a story still after the war in their fantasy world. Loved it. It was kind of short, but I guess it is setting up the final book in the series, which I haven't read it, which is Cassian and Nesta's um, romance. So I'm glad I read it so I can continue on in the, in the, <laughs> in the series. Love these stickers too. The Inheritance Game I read. This was very entertaining. YA, kind of a mystery, whodunit. Um, this young girl who seems to have no relationship to this important wealthy family inherits like their whole inheritance. And there's three grandsons and it's kind of like a like a mystery thing. She's good at riddles and things. So her and like the grandsons are figuring out why the grandfather left it to her and not the grandsons. So it's fast paced. It was enjoyable. Good four star read. Love that book. Lunar Love, cute rom-com romance. If this was made into a movie, I would totally see it. Uh, Lunar Love, she owns, her name is Liv, she, Olivia. She owns a matchmaking service based on the Zodiac sign through the Chinese calendar. Is that Chinese Zodiac? That's how it is. And then a competitor makes an app that's doing kind of the exact same thing based on an algorithm where hers, it's definitely based on personality traits for your Zodiac sign. So it's like a enemies to lovers trope. They're so cute. Like it was so cute. Ben is so cute in the story. Um, I can see this, like I said, being a movie. Uh, good four star romance read. The bickering is great. Um, and the self growth that Liv goes through in order to realize like being stuck in your ways are not always fantastic. Like it's good to open up your mind. <laughs> fantastic read. Then I fell in love and I found Catherine Cowles. Her... It, this is called the Tattered and Torn series. This is book one and two and three. And I still probably have left room to write up some more stuff here. Romantic suspense. It's a new genre for me. She does it so well. She has a new series coming out, but this is like her third series. So written really good. They are all small town romances. This one is involving the, the main character guy is the sheriff in town. And in the past, um, his sister was kidnapped and abducted. And so um, Everly was the daughter of the man who did that to his family. So she's like hated in town and he's like grumpy. She's the sunshine and she's just trying to live her life. She's come back to town and there's always like a little suspense element because in the town they live where like her family is are kind of like, what do you call them? Like a survivalist. They don't really abide by society standards they're waiting for you know armageddon to come they do their own thing they sheriff and police their own families their own way and they live off the land so they're very secluded and so it's kind of their romance as he kind of forgives her then falling embers is this main character's younger sister and his best friend so it's brother best friend romance once again, she is sheltered because her sister was abducted when they were kids, but she's like an adrenaline junkie. She has a social media account and she starts having a stalker and then that's how their romance flourishes. Ugh, I think I love that one the most. And then Hidden Waters, Beckett is the main character here's younger, oh no, older brother. And then uh, Addie here is her cousin who was stuck in that creepy survivalist 
living. And so for her, everything's like first, she's never had pizza and she's never eaten Chinese food and she finally ran away and is living with them and coming into her own reeling, realizing how messed up their upbringing and childhood was. Cause there's a lot of, you know, abuse there and rape in their, that culture because men are hierarchy and women have no rights and, you know, just bear children and take care of the house loved all of these if i can't rec if you want to take one recommendation start some katherine cowles they are fantastic black girls must die exhausted i listened to this one a good like female empowerment story reminded me of sex in the city because it's her which is taddy tabby tabby tabitha and like her two friends and then just their uh friendship you know with work issues and f their friendship and their own like uh, husband issues um, one has a little bit of a mental health concern because there is um, trigger warning for a suicide attempt. Um, but they always come together and the, I guess it's just like a kind of a slice of life, like just, and they're all um, black female characters. So kind of the racism that they also experience in their different work areas was also um, prevalent in this story. I think there is a second book in the sequel. I will pick it up. This was definitely a good read. Surprisingly, a historical fiction, Queen of Thieves. This was the second book in my book of the month. Loved this story, guys. Like, okay, it takes place in the 1920s after World War II in London. And Alice is the main character, Alice Diamonds, and she has the 40 Thieves. So it's a band of like female th thefts, thieves, thieves. They're all thieves and they steal from the rich to give to the poor. But some uh, along the way, now the main, one of the characters gets put in jail for six months. And so then it's her plot of revenge to get Alice Diamond's uh, gang. <laughs> and the whole time you don't think anything really is happening, but there is a good like plot twist and then a nice um, plot twist. It was just good. It was surprisingly good. And don't get me wrong, some of the because they had really rich uh, London accents, um, dialect for it. So some of it was lost on me when reading it because I didn't understand all of it, how it should be said or what the remark was. So if you're familiar with like linguistics of 1920 London, it's also a good read because it definitely has that character development there. Love on the Brain, Allie Hazelwood. Love her books. I have read most of them. This one's no different. This one's like an em enemies to lovers, friends to lovers romance taking place in STEM. They both work for NASA and she thinks he hates her their whole career. And it turns out, you know, that he's loved her this whole time. And it's their romance. Very cute. I did not enjoy lessons in chemistry. If you follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. I put my stories on as I finish books. I just felt like the character was a 1950s chemist. She's female. And you're in living in an age where men dominate. You know, women aren't as smart. Women don't have jobs outside the house. You know, Susie Homemaker kind of thing. And so she's breaking that uh, stereotype. But she's such a stubborn, arrogant, you know, narcissistic character. It was so, she was just a frustrating character. I could not love her. I did not hate her. But it was just somewhere in the middle where she was just too elite and socially awkward in every situation that it just drove me nuts. And then on top of it, they gave the dog they rescued, like character, like the dog would have monologues, lost me there. And then in it too, trigger warnings for rape, this character like gets raped twice. Now, if I carry myself as this very smart chemist with my lab coat going to work and she's single mom, um, how does that happen to you twice? <laughs> In your lifetime so some of it was lost on me it just wasn't as believable a story as i would like it to be so then crying in h mart was the last one i read in the month of january five star read it's a memoir of michelle zahner she's half korean half american and it was just a beautiful memoir on how she grew up asian american with kind of a, an identity crisis her mom gets cancer though and she loses her mom to cancer and it's just her story on how to find herself after losing her mom. There's a lot of correlation to Asian cuisine so I also lost some of the vocabulary there because I'm not familiar with all the foods and dishes but I could understand it. Me being a, of a Latino background you know rice and beans and things are <laughs> important to us and they're comfort foods so a lot of the story is being Korean American, and this book was fantastic. If you pick up a memoir, I highly recommend Crying in H Mart. It was just well done, very and touching, and I and I cried, <laughs> and I cried. 
<laughs> okay, so that are all. those are all the stories I read in the month of January. This is new content. Let me know down below if you've enjoyed this look into the books I've read this month. Please leave a comment down below with any book recommendations that you think I could enjoy. And I'll see you back with another flip through and filling out the stats, uh, the stat table in February. Bye everyone.